Hi everyone, it's Paula from Paula Quilting. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today another tutorial about how we can transform just simple four patches. And I have made again uh, 30 of them uh, for another layout 5 by 6 The squares I'm using are 6.5 inches and the bigger obviously square is 12.5. Before I start cutting them up, I just wanted to note all of those uh, disappearing four patches I've done recently, that one included. It's very good if you have some squares which may you have not necessarily cut exactly to what you wanted and now you they lying down there somewhere and you do not know what you want to do with them because as you can maybe notice here this edge is not necessary even to this one or even here I have not kind of sewed them exactly with uh, nesting so that will all disappear in the process so you don't have to worry about it uh, and obviously you don't have to use six and a half inches squares you can use any uh, format you've got smaller bigger whatever you've got in your cupboard so just use up those scraps so what we want to do today is fun for patches <laughs> I just thought it would be nice to see what we can come up with it if we do some sort of a slicing through uh, on bias. And uh, the only tip for the beginning I would like to say is when you are ironing your four patches when you get them ready, uh, do starch them at this point of time if your fabric is quite, quite flimsy like some of mine are because they are res re you know recycled purpose materials and some of them are thinner than others. Uh, so I did starch all of them on the last ironing to make sure that when I'm working with it, uh, they are not going to be moving too much. So what I want to do is uh, stack them together. And I would say that the square which you may not like that much than others, like you may have a favorite favorites here, and maybe there will be one patch you you like it, but you know less than others. Just put them uh, uh, in one corner towards you. So here I can do it like that, and I've made thirty squares, like I've mentioned, and I'm stacking them uh, far in in the batches of five, three, four and five so i will have six stacks of five and i will now just quickly check that i don't have the same fabric in the same spot if they're coming out somewhere else i don't worry about it just don't want to have the same fabric in the same spot uh, this one is fine here is fine and here is fine as well okay and now we're going to slice it four times that's why i've put five because we will be swapping pieces and if we have a five of them uh, it kind of works out the best so the first cut I will go from here I'm just going from that corner here to kind of somewhere in the more or less middle of that square I'm not measuring anything we don't have to measure anything so don't worry about it and also when I was stacking them they don't have to be stuck you know perfectly either then cut number two somewhere here now at the bottom here uh, you may or may you may not like to have them kind of cut so they kind of meet here you could you could I could have cut somewhere to come up on this side as well and it would have been perfectly fine um, if you worry about how you'll be stitching make sure make yourself a gap here between one cut to another at least a uh, little bit more than half an inch then they will not come up together but because we will be squaring those uh, uh, patches later again uh, this will be cut off anyway so you don't have to worry about it but just do what is kind of more comfortable to you so I will leave myself a little bit more than half an inch here cut number two and the thing is if you cut the first batch and you sew it together and there was an issue with it you just cut the next batch a little bit different so it's not a problem so cut number three and then cut number four as you can see I'm not anywhere close to the corner here and that's fine as well okay I did all my four cuts and now I will leave the first bit as is in the second bit I will move that 
uh, first top one slice to the bottom. In the second one I will take the top two slices and put them at the bottom. Something didn't go through correctly. Need to change my blade. Okay, let's just put them back in the order because now I will need to move three. I just need to make sure I'm moving the right three. Okay, that was the bottom one, so that's fine. So I moved one here, two here. Now I'm taking three from the top and I will put them at the bottom. And now I'll just bring the bottom one to the top. And now we just need to stitch them together and see what great blocks we're going to get. Okay, so we can chain piece all of that um, batch of the blocks, which is, uh, you know, great time saving. Uh, so I'm taking first two of my cuts and I will uh, stitch them together. Now, they, they are cut on an angle, so if you want to uh, stitch them so this uh, side is nice and flat, you need to kind of... Um, shift it a little bit so the sticking out part is around quarter inch here sticking out but because we're going to be squaring it up it really doesn't matter <laughs> so you don't have to do that if you don't want to but if you want to practice because you're planning maybe stitching some uh, triangles or tumblers where you have a similar situation then you can practice so you need to kind of mark yourself or eyeball a quarter inch from the uh, corner to the left and that's where you need to um, cross that other fabric you're putting on top of it. So that's that's how you work your triangles or tumblers. But like I said, here if you don't do that, if you just eyeball and they are not exactly even, it's absolutely fine because we're going to be squaring it up at the end anyway. Okay, so I'm just uh, stitching first two cuts one after another and then I will be going back and chain piece, piece three, four and five. Just be careful not to pull the fabric because it's all caught on bias and especially if you have maybe not starched your fabric to make it a little bit more rigid. You do want to keep an eye on it to make sure you kind of you don't stretch as you go along and um, just let the machine pull it, pull it for you and you just guide it to make it straight. Also you don't need to necessarily actually sew even with quarter inch because again we will be squaring them up. So as far as your seam is straight, uh, what the width is, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I finished sewing a batch of my um, squares and when you're sewing here towards the end, don't worry how this looks, that will go, uh, you know, you will chop it off anyway, so no stress there. And because I uh, starched the squares when I was doing four patches, after I kind of re-iron them, they are still nice and rigid, but if, if it comes to be a little bit more flimsy, you can always put a little bit more of the spray starch when you're ironing. So just do whatever you need to do to make it nice and flat for yourself. And I'm going to be squaring them up again to 10.5 inches. I could probably maybe go to 11, but 
I'm not going to be kind of forcing it. Ten and a half is absolutely fine and that's, uh, you know, fit with my pattern. One side and you can see there is not much um, uh, kind of leftovers from it. There's nothing I can actually use for any new project. So that's good. See, that's all of chopped off. So whatever happens here at the corner, you don't have to worry about it at all. And here we go. That's what our square will look like. So I will now crack on with the rest of the batches, the rest of the um, squares, chop them off, sum them together, square them up, and I'll pop them on the design wall so we can have a look on some options how we can put those uh, uh, squares together. All right, so blocks are ready. Let's talk layouts. So layout no number one, where all the bigger pieces are coming together. So that's kind of four blocks put together, four blocks put together, and so on. Looks awesome. You can see all of those small ones coming out together, kind of creating a secondary pattern. What you can do is make this as your one final block and just put sashing in between. Layout number one. Okay, so here I reverse the block so all the small bits are coming together and really looks like kaleidoscope type of uh, kind of view, which is really, really nice. What you can do is add very, very narrow strip of the sashing here, like one inch cut, no, not more, and something nice in the middle, like add a little nice you know, pop of the color there, or even put black, that will look awesome too. And then you can or you not need to put sashings in between the individual blocks because that will kind of uh, make that uh, extra design. So that's the layout number two. Okay, this layout. Two bigger coming together, uh, two smaller coming together on the other side. So here we have like a wonky um, square in a square now coming, or maybe star, however you want to look at, look at it. So uh, we'll have another secondary pattern coming out uh, from that uh, setup. So those three uh, layouts will work well when you have the layout that you have at least, uh, you know, you've got even numbers both ways for the blocks. Uh, because my quilt will be be five by six, which means uh, that way I've got five blocks. I will go with a little bit of different uh, layout on that one. Okay, so this layout I've put all the bigger pieces going down. So this layout can be used for any uh, type of layout you want to do. I mean, the, the block wise, it will work for any layout. So uh, for my five by six, it will work as well. But the other thing I can do is do some sort of a chevron which will go big down, big up, big down, big up and the same here. Or, you know, do one uh, row, all big go down and all big go up, all big go down and all big go up. So there's a few more you can do. I think I like this one, so I'll go with this uh, setup for my uh, next quilt for the uh, Southampton Street Angels for the um, people in need. It takes me about a day to prepare a, a top like that so it's quite easy and quick project to make especially if you have some random squares flying around uh, your sewing room. Thank you very much for joining me today for this tutorial. I hope you enjoy the uh, fun with fans <laughs> blog. Uh, that's why I'm calling it. All other tutorials I've mentioned in these videos are going to be in the description below, so be sure to check those out. I've still got six and a half inches and I've got four and a half inches uh, squares I'll be working on to bring some more uh, fun blocks uh, made out of four patches and then maybe I'll move to nine patches, I will see. <laughs> if you like this blog, be sure to share it with your friends, uh, welcome them uh, to this channel. If you haven't subscribed already, I hope you will do it now to join me. Uh, in my quilting adventure and for more scrappy blocks. Thank you for watching today and see you next time.